Hey there. If you get any value from our conversations that Alex and I have on a weekly basis, whether it's a guest or the two of us talking, do us a favor. Click and rate the show. What this is going to do is continue to share the podcast with other people. It's going to get the message of true health out. That there's more to health than physical, that your health and faith are connected. And when you pursue this design of health that God created, everything changes. So do us a favor, even before this episode starts, we're super grateful for each of you. And in today's episode, we're going to be diving into habit number seven, embracing purpose, which is connecting to something bigger and better than yourself to fill the inner void that you have within. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Welcome back to another episode of the Holo Health Podcast. Like we talked about in the intro, we are wrapping up, putting a bow on, buttoning up our conversation and series all about the seven habits of health. I'm Trevor Deal, one of your hosts, and I'm actually in the studio live next to my good friend and partner, Mr. Alex Michael Cottingham. How you doing? Good, good, good sir. How you doing? Good, sir. I'm doing great. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, because this is uh, there is a video component. True. Um, we're matching. We are. And Turn around and show them. Seven habits, seven baby. Habits. That's how much we take this seriously. Mm-hmm. We do. We embody um, everything. Even exactly. even even those six other episodes, we didn't talk about it, but we wore these shirts every every time. That's not true. Um, it's not. Um, but I'm really excited to talk about purpose because this is what separates the seven habits of health or, or holo health from every other health paradigm. Because there's even other health things out there that talk about. You got to be healthy yeah. mentally or emotionally, but I think purpose is not just a spiritual thing. Purpose is a human thing, mm. and we're going to get into that, but this is what is the linchpin to true health because it's not for us. It's for others. Yeah. It's for others and God, and that's literally biblical, so yeah. we're going to get into that. We are going to get into it, and it was one of the things that just whenever I saw what you were doing before I even became a part of Holo Health, I said, like, man, this is different, right? Like you're, you're talking about. Most people in culture, when we talk about this, are just talking about diets and exercise. But there are a lot of brands that are talking about, hey, you gotta, you gotta look at your mental health too, right? And right. the church is really keen on talking about your community, your walk with Jesus, right? But there's an, there's often a a, a miss, missed opportunity to talk about the other areas of your health. What we're trying to do is talk about health in every single area, and it's encompassed and embodied and formulated, finalized in habit number seven: embrace purpose. And Alex, as you were writing the seven habits of health and kind of formulating, we talked about this, you know, a couple of episodes previously. I, I want to know a little bit more about some of the sources you looked at to, to glean, okay, purpose is a part of a truly healthy life. Can you explain that for us? Yeah, I mean, it feels top of my head. I mean, man, I, I wrote the the Holo State four or five years ago at this point. When you were um, a bulk pony. <laughs> shout out if Kurt Tobias is listening. Um <laughs> The first one that kind of sparked my interest were um, the blue zones, like the nine power zones of the commonalities of the centenarians, people who live 100 or longer yeah. in five major area groups um, in the world. Um, and then you go to psychology and you look at Abraham Maslow, Maslow's hierarchy of needs and yeah. how the human body or the human, just the humanity has basic needs like food, water, shelter, safety at the very bottom, Mm -hmm. like your physical needs. Then you move into more mental and emotional needs. But at the very top, he called it what's called like self-actualization. And underneath self-actualization, not just becoming who God designed you to be, but honestly doing that for others. So there were just uh, many other ones. Even Japan, there's there's something called Ikigai, like having a purpose um, on what you do, who you are, your community. Um, There just were there's a lot of research talking about when you live a life beyond just yourself, yeah. you have fulfillment. And that's where true health and whole health intersects all of the other research and kind of just capitalize on it because we do not pursue health for the main motivation of ourselves. It's a byproduct. Yeah. And I do enjoy when I'm healthier than versus when I'm unhealthy. Yeah. But the main motivation is so that I can love other people better, that I can be a better husband, father, employee, boss, neighbor, whatever that is, because purpose is going to get us there. And we're going to talk about what purpose actually is. Yeah. And before we dig into that, I just kind of want to touch on a few more things, Alex. Uh, listeners, 
So things he just mentioned, the blue zones, uh, hierarchy of, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, uh, and the thing I'm about to mention, I'm going to put in the show notes if you want to dig deeper into purpose and some of the, the commonalities that Alex mentioned and pulled from to create the seven habits of health. But the thing that I want to mention is one of my, my favorite books that I've ever read. It's called Man's Search for Meaning. Yeah. And it's not specifically about men. It's yeah. like, you know, man as like a human uh, yeah, humanity human species. Yeah. Right, humanity. And it's written by a uh, an author, uh, an Austrian psychiatrist. His name is Viktor Frankl. He's no longer uh, living. But he wrote this book post his experience in the Holocaust. Mm. So like I mentioned, he's an Austrian psychiatrist and was not a Jew, but was captured by the Germans and was kind of in this weird in-between phase where he wasn't treated like he was a German soldier or a counterpart. And he wasn't treated like he was a Jew in the, in the concentration camps. And so he, he saw a lot of both sides of the coin. But one of the things he writes about is this concept of logotherapy, mm-hmm. Alex, which you talk about in the Holo State, and then he talks about and impacts in the book. But it's really the idea that human beings are most motivated when we're searching for meaning. Right. And he unpacks it in a really powerful way in the fact that he's revealing that those who survived the Holocaust found a meaning and a greater purpose outside of what they were enduring in that season, in that time. And so he, he not only wrote the book and you know wrote, wrote about his thoughts from that, but he talked to surviving members of the Holocaust to discover this reality. And the reason that we share this is because if you, if you pause for a second, listener, if you like, if you pause the episode and you, you sat down and asked yourself, is there something that I desire that's bigger than myself? Mm. The answer is going to be yes. Every, if you're honest with yourself, it'll always be yes. It always is going to be yes. A lot of us, you know, what I'm seeing a lot in, you know, I'm 27 and spend a lot of time with friends that are my age and in similar seasons of life. And I'm, you know, even for myself, I've noticed this, but other people as well, they're kind of searching for like, where can I find this purpose? I even mm. talked about it in a small group of guys earlier this week. I want to find purpose. Mm. And we'll talk a little bit about how we can like help embrace purpose in your life. And we're going to dig into that. But as we like to talk about, it's important to have the correct definition yeah. of purpose. And there are some super common definitions of purpose. But Alex, I want to talk about like how we define purpose before we dig into the things that can help us actually break, embrace purpose and practically what that can look like. We define purpose as a means to an end. Yeah. That's it. It's a means to an end. The purpose of a shovel is not the shovel. The purpose of the shovel is to dig holes. The purpose of the shovel is the way in which you dig a hole. I can't dig a hole unless I have a shovel. So the purpose of the shovel, I don't create a shovel just to have a shovel. Mm. It's to dig a hole. The purpose of this pen is so that I can write a letter. This marker is to write on the whiteboard, not for the marker itself. Yeah. So when you, when you say, okay, what is purpose? It's just simply a means to an end. But now contextualize that for us as human beings in the context of, hey, God created us. What's, what's our purpose? Like larger purpose, right? But then what, how does this integrate into health? This is literally a two-year seminary degree condensed into four words, love God, love others. Our purpose is to love God, love others. Like that's Jesus' command to us. Yeah. That's our purpose. That's what God designed us for. Right. And when we're healthy, we can better do that. Mm-hmm. We can embrace that purpose. But here's what's tricky is most people don't want to be the means. They want to be the end. Ooh, they want to say, on, say that again. Most people don't want to be the means. They want to be the end. I feel like he was talking to me. <laughs> you know, sometimes talking you, to everybody. I know that, but sometimes you hear stuff, you're like, I needed to hear that because I I think that too. You cannot embrace purpose if you are the end. Yeah. You can only embrace purpose if you are the means. If you are asking yourself, what's in it for me? There's got to be more to life than this. Um, what can I get out of this? You're inadvertently putting yourself as the end. When it comes to health, when it comes to seven halves of health, the reason I sleep well, the reason I eat clean, the reason I cultivate community is so that my cup is full. And when I pour it out, it is love. It is peace. Yeah. It is strength and vitality and energy and understanding and truth. So that I can honor God and shine the light better and understand my brother more and empathize when he needs empathy and speak truth in his life when he needs truth. And I can love them better and meet their needs whenever God calls me to. Jesus said, let your light shine before men so that they may see your good deeds. And then afterwards in Matthew, it says, and glorify your father in heaven. 
It's a reason bigger than ourselves. I'm not going to, we talked about this in another episode, post on Instagram of something I was able to do, maybe in the gym, for people to say, oh, hey, look at me. Health is not about vanity. It's about ability. It's like, hey, look at the ability that God has been able to give me so that I can now shine the light on something bigger than myself, whether it's a gym or a business or a brand or a give back or um, someone in need. That is purpose. And Yeah, what you just said right there I think is key. So as believers, as Jesus followers, God set us apart through his son, Jesus, right? We're made right and righteous through Jesus's death, burial, and resurrection on the cross mm. and, and faith and grace in his gospel. From there, I think it's really easy to, to skip over the fact that, yeah, while our like underlying created purpose is to love God and love other people with, with all that we are, body, mind, and soul, he can and does invite us into these specific callings in our life. He creates these, you know, things that break our heart. He creates these things that make us tick, that, that fire us up, that bring passion into our lives that we want to pour time and energy into. That is also purpose. What you just said yeah. right there, it's digging into finding those areas and digging into those things more to embrace purpose, mm. right? Because you can still love God and love people while also build building a, a coaching brand that's all about helping people become healthy in right. every area right as an example so listeners i want to share that because it's not like hey you know just love god and love people y yes do that. that that should be the underlying foundation and motivation but then also we're, we're going to talk about you can find purpose in areas in your life whether it's in your family whether it is in your work whether it's in an organization that you spend time whether it's with a group of men that you you walk and do life with i think all those things are just you know, kind of practical top of mind examples, but, but it is, it is big picture and it is granular. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, two piggybacking thoughts were culture's version of health will not help you get here mm -hmm. because it's one, me, 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 me. Yes. Yeah. Culture's kingdom, culture's version of health is you, 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 you get to the highest pedestal. You climb the corporate ladder. You have other people serve you. You pursue health so people can look at you, follow you, like you. Um, it is built around you. Yeah. And scriptures talk about it, the ways of the world, the pride of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. It talks about essentially feeding into the disordered desires of the flesh to say, hey, look at me, look at me, look at me, which is why embracing purpose sets hollow health and true health differently compared to any other thing because true health goes against that grain. And here's what I was going to say is this isn't in the hollow state, but I'll say this now is that one of the spiritual underpinnings that embracing purpose hinges on is death to self. Mm -hmm. When Jesus says, pick up your cross, crucify your flesh, deny yourself and follow me. Yeah. He's not saying death to self, like death to your body. He's saying death to your disordered desires, yeah. death to the flesh. Galatians talks about crucify the flesh. It's not lighthearted language. Yeah. He's using extreme language because he knows the tendencies and the potential that the flesh can do. Yeah. He's talking about denying what that primal animalistic, what Paul talks about in the New um, Testament, in the flesh. flesh yeah. That is vital to embracing purpose because the flesh wants to self-preserve, self-exhort, self-glorify, self-protect. Self, 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 self. Yeah. Embracing purpose is about denying self and glorifying and exalting others. So that's where purpose is tied to your spiritual health yeah. because we must do that. The second thing I was going to say, Trevor, is when it comes to purpose, you can have the same behavior with different motivations. And that's what makes purpose tricky. Mm -hmm. You can't just do something and say, oh, hey, that was purpose. Because I could go help a neighbor. For example, let's just. I'm going to go, our, my next door neighbor's moving in. I'm going to go help them for one hour. I'm going to move their fridge and move their piano and all that stuff. That same behavior could be, oh, hey, I hope these neighbors look at how good of a neighbor I am. That's a matter of the heart. That's a poor motivation. That's in the flesh because I'm inadvertently saying I'm, I'm going to help them, but I'm going to manipulate it be like, oh, hey, he's going to say, man, he's so strong or look at him. He's a good neighbor. Or the other motivation is I'm doing this as a selfless act. I'm embracing purpose to love them, and I'm not asking anything in return. That same behavior can have two motivations of the heart, yeah. which is why it's the, partly why the seven halves of health 
are sequential. They're prescriptive because number one, you can know if you're sleeping or not. Habit number one is sleep well. Yeah. You're either sleeping or not. It's pretty simple. Yeah. But when it comes to purpose, it's a matter of the heart. And the reason why embracing purpose is number seven is when I am sleeping well, eating clean, moving often, increasing clarity, decreasing stress, and cultivating community, I now can examine the motives of my heart way easier than if I'm sleep deprived, malnourished, sedentary, believing lies. Like it's way, way easier, which is why there's a prescriptive order to the seven halves of health. But those are the two things I was going to add. Yeah, I think that's great. So this is a great point, listeners. A lot of that is like, hey, let's get on the same page with purpose, embracing purpose, habit seven, how it culminates everything. Like Alex talked about, there's a, both a beauty and a difficulty, unlike the previous six habits. You know, everyone needs seven to nine hours of sleep. That's pretty clear and tangible, right? That's that's easily yeah. understandable, Alex. But you, you know exactly what to do. And, there, you know, there's flexibility in the application piece in terms of like when, when you go to bed, when you wake up, et cetera. But purpose and embracing purpose, every person decides what that looks like for themselves, just mm -hmm. like what you talked about. And there's freedom and there's beauty and there's challenge to it, but you're going to, you're going to fill that inner void differently than I am. Right. And so what I want to talk about now are just a few things to help listeners. This is the practical part of the episode, the conversations around how can you understand better to embrace purpose? What does it actually look like? And this is all conversational to get your thoughts going, to get your mind running. And I want you to be thinking about these things as we step into, we're going to talk about three realizations, three postures, and three questions. And then we're going to get down to just the basic, most practical sentence that we can about embracing purpose. But as you're doing, as we're talking through this, think about this in context of your own life. Okay. Apply this to your own life. That's how you become, you take information and you, you take it with application that, that breeds transformation. You will not take embracing purpose for what it is unless you understand it. Look how you can apply this to your own life and then start to do that, right? Right. All right, let's dive in, Alex. Three realizations. I, I'm just going to hit on them real quick. We can riff and then keep moving and grooving. But the first realization is you're not what you do, right? You can embrace purpose whether you have a job or not. Your occupational output should not be the sole source of your identity. Mm. This is challenging for a lot of people, especially myself, probably you as well. The realization, too, that we're going to talk about is there's more to life than me. Mm. You talked about it just a minute. It's not about uh, the platform or the amount of possessions or selfishness, the success, the status. It's not about that. It's about becoming a means to an end, like you talked about. The third realization, Alex, and then we, let's dive into these and, and you just share your overall thoughts, is it's better to give than receive. And this is this is so based, all of these are based in scripture, right? And that, that's intentional, but it is reflecting on the difference than, um, like you mentioned, going to help your neighbor move. Or just sitting at home doing what you want, watching yeah. TV. When they've asked you to come help, like I can't. Right. Or buying Starbucks for the person behind you, mm. rather than um, just worrying about yourself. I right. don't have time to do it. I, you know, I can't do it. I would piggyback and highlight realization number two. There's more to life than me. One of my daily prayers, I have a huge list of daily prayers, and it's honestly truth that I know I need to remind myself with. One of my daily prayers is God, remind me that my world is not the world. Heavenly Father, remind me that my world is not the world because the flesh, the self, wants to convince me that my world that revolves around coming Georgia, that revolves around my work, that revolves around my kids, is the entire world. And I think that the entire world is my world. Yeah. Where in reality, when, I, when I'm like, God, help me to see the world as you see it and see what's going on overseas, see what's going on in other states, see what's going on bigger than just myself, mm -hmm. I can now say, oh, wow, it is less about me. And that's part of embracing purpose. I need to minimize the self and maximize other people. Yeah. And that's just one just realization or truth that you can renew the mind with. Yeah, super great. Listeners, all of these things are going to be put in the show notes, the three realizations. And the next part of this is the three postures, the three positions, thought processes, postures that you can take both both internally and externally first posture is be humble yeah humility is the virtue that pieces or excuse me that places you at, as a means to an end it is not about thinking less of yourself it's about thinking of yourself excuse me it's not about thinking yeah i said it right yeah, you said it right yeah it's not about thinking less of yourself it's about thinking of yourself less right that's all what humility is circled around the second posture alex is to be curious yeah everything you've learned started outside of your current understanding a lot of what we're sharing here right is helping you learn what health actually is and so for you 
to continue learning, you got to be curious. And when you learn, it leads to growth. Growth leads to change and positive change leads to true health. One cannot learn anything without curiosity. Mm. Okay, so posture two is to be curious. Posture three is to be intentional. Probably my favorite word ever is intentional or purposeful. Same thing, synonymous. Purpose isn't plopped into your lap. It takes wrestling, chiseling, sanding off the rough edges for yourself internally and externally. What does this look like? Deliberate thought and then action must be in the driver's seat in order to embrace purpose. Again, as we kind of riff on those out, be humble, be curious, be intentional. Yeah. I want to, um, as we're kind of coming to the end of our time, I want to really major on the questions because I think this is probably where the most power yeah. lies. Yeah. So we, again, we'll put all this down there. We said the three realizations, three postures, and three questions all designed to help you embrace purpose. The three questions, Alex, are one, if you could write one message on a billboard for every human to read, what would it be? All right, pause really quick. That question is powerful. Super. And I don't want to breeze by that. Because what we say is like, whatever your answer is, is a is a way that God purposely intertwined purpose into your DNA or into yeah. your heart. But I want you to think about that. If over seven point whatever billion people could read one message on a billboard, what is that in your heart? Yeah. You know, one, I hope it's not follow Alex Cottingham on Instagram. Like I hope it's not self exalting. Yeah. I hope it's connecting to something bigger and better than just yourself. But think about that. Yeah. I think that I think that question is powerful. Yeah. Most definitely. Another way to phrase that is what breaks your heart. Yeah. That would help understand what would I put on a billboard. Right. I think the billboard is the application of that. Like 100%. what breaks your heart? What's the solution? Yeah. And um, yeah, I've had great conversations around that question. Same, especially as of late. Question two, what do I want to be known for? So think about it. Your name comes up in a conversation. What do you want people to think of? What do you want people to to? say about you what thoughts do you want them to have how can you become a means to an end this is this is really a great question to wrestle with what do i want to be known for i wrote this the other day which is kind of a, a you know a sub question of this like what are the what are the five things i want somebody to to think of when they think of trevor Deal? yeah i think that's a great question for people to, to process through last one alex is what do i want people to line up at the end of my life and thank me for yeah I think question two and question three kind of piggyback because the second one is your current life as you're living. Like, what do you want to be known for? But then once you are gone, because one out of one people die, what do you want your legacy to be? Legacy, yeah. And when people are honest and strip back the shell, you want to be known for giving your life away, for giving your time, giving your expertise, being patient, being present to the moment. Yeah. No one is remembered by their portfolio, their accolades, how much money they made, like all the material achievements. It's giving your life away, the relationships, the smiling, the fun memories. Like that's purpose yeah. because it's not about you. Yeah. It's about others. It's about memories. It's about loving people well. Sometimes it's the small things, not the big things. So mm -hmm. those questions are powerful. Yeah. Listeners, the three realizations, three postures, and three questions will be in the show notes. Alex, as we're wrapping it up, we're, we're singing and uh, the cows are coming home. As say. <laughs> and I want you to share our favorite one-liner on when somebody says, yeah. explain to me how to embrace purpose. Yeah. And I want you to, to share the line and then just give some top of mind examples for people practically what they can do. Okay. How you embrace purpose is you find a need and meet it. I'll say it again. Find a need and meet it. In other words, put another way, do something that's not for you. Do something that's not for you. Do something that you will, will not and cannot get something in return or hope to get something in return one day. This could look like giving to a city that was decimated by a tornado in the Great Plains of wherever. This could be serving at a soup kitchen because they're short-staffed. This could be coaching your son's t-ball team because they literally have asked seven people they cannot, so you are going to coach even though you're slammed and busy. Yeah. This could be listening to your coworker who just 
went through a really hard time and they just need someone to listen. They don't need advice, but they just need to listen. And you know that you're not going to get your 20 minutes back, but they need this 20 minutes more than you. That person had a listening need. That town had a giving need. That soup kitchen had a serving need. There are several needs. But when I'm just focused on me, or when I'm caring for my own unhealth, because I'm not stewarding habits one through six well, I do not see those needs. But it's God open my eyes to see the needs of others and help me meet them. Give me the wisdom and courage to know what to do and how to meet those needs. So it's finding a need and meeting it. Do something that's not for you. That's what embracing purpose is. Habit number seven. And that's how God designed you. Exactly. And I hope you've enjoyed our series on the seven habits of health. If you're, if you're just picking up in embracing purpose in this episode, we encourage you to go back and listen. Because again, it's a, it's a recounting of that content, right? The seven habits of health are a core piece of everything that we're doing here at Holo Health. It's helping us practically live a truly healthy life, the daily and weekly rhythms that a truly healthy person pursues. Mm. And if you want to build habits that change every area of your health, that help you like what you see, love how you feel, and pursue health the way God designed it, then join the Holo Collective, yes. our free digital community, which is focused on helping you build these rhythms into your life in a sustainable way. You get accountability, you get coaching, we have challenges, and you're a part of something bigger than yourself. That's it, which baby. Which is embracing purpose. That's it. We hope you enjoyed this conversation. Again, leave us a like, review, share it on your story, and we'll see you in the next episode. You're a legend. See ya.